President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. L'audience est reprise. The hearing on evidence with regard to Nguyen Chi was conducted uh, the whole day yesterday, but uh, it has not yet concluded. Uh, however, Due to the fact that Nguyen Chi has experienced some hypertension, the chamber had to adjourn to allow Nguyen Chi to have some rest so that he can be ready to respond to further questions. Today we convene the session as usual, and we have noted that uh, his health condition is still not uh, very good because his, his blood pressure is unusually high, as indicated uh, by the on-duty medical practitioner at this court. So the chamber would like uh, to inform the party that the chamber will continue questioning the accused uh, the whole morning. But in the afternoon matinée, session, after lunch break, uh, the chamber will not uh, be putting more questions to the accused. Instead, the chamber will call a civil party to testify before this chamber des to en lui place. compensate the time when Nguyen Chi is having some rest Et in the afternoon session. We have changed le, the schedule a little bit uh, as we already indicated due to the fact that uh, the accused person is an elderly person and uh, even the civil parties in the proceedings are elderly people. And uh, we perhaps in the future may reserve the, the right to change uh, the schedule when need be. The security personnel are now instructed to bring the accused to the dock. Good morning, Your Honours. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, is it possible to re-evaluate his medical condition after the first break uh, to see whether he is able to continue? And uh, just for the record, um, I, I would like to uh, note that my client waives his right to be present this afternoon so that uh, it is actually possible to continue. He doesn't want to be present while uh, the other witness is being heard. Thank you. Témoins seront entendus. On 
just now the chamber already informed the parties and the public with regard to the current situation the chamber has obtained a report a medical report or notes from the doctor médecins qui sont ici stationnés au CETC. Dr. Kum Sam San, the doctor Dr. on Kum duty Sam Sam. in this courtroom who has submitted the report and the chamber has already taken into account that this medical evaluation and notes also that uh, we need to change the schedule with regard to the hearing of noon cheer in the afternoon by uh, instead by uh, having to hear a civil party who nous will be testifying. Civils, we have place, uh, already uh, been prepared, in particular regarding the preparation of doctors who are ready to assist uh, the Les accused person to evaluate or reevaluate the health condition of each and every accused person and consequently report uh, to the chamber so that uh, the chamber can take any immediate action as appropriate. À la cour qui peut prendre à tout instant les mesures we would like to hand over to Judge Silver Cartwright to proceed with further questions to Nguyen Chia. The President Nguyen Chia, you may now proceed. Nguyen Chia, your honors, may I suggest that the questions be shorter because I am afraid that Alors, when the question is long, I perhaps cannot fully longues, understand or cannot uh, respond uh, appropriately. The President, thank you for your suggestion. May I now suggest that uh, our judges of the bench uh, Put shorter questions instead. Counsel for Kilsampan, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une très courte question pour Very vous demander laquelle des parties civiles euh, comptez-vous entendre ce matin, enfin plutôt cet après-midi d'ailleurs, dans quel ordre en fait the president, we have already informed the parties in the memorandum that two civil parties will be heard first. A uh, civil party to be heard this afternoon is civil party TCP185. Chacha Sobokatra, you may now proceed. Thank you, President. Nguyen Chia, in the closing order at paragraph 866, it states that you held uh, military roles between 1970 and 1975. Is that correct? Your Honor, I time and again 
reiterate that I have Je never been in the military committee. Été membre du comité I militaire. was in charge of education Je me suis occupé des questions at the, within the standing committee. And that's Dans le all. cadre du comité permanent, c'est tout. In fact, you had Question. other responsibilities as well as being deputy secretary and being in charge of education. You also had responsibilities for propaganda ever since the 1950s when you came back from Thailand. Is that correct? Response. According to Réponse. this, I accept that it is correct. Oui, c'est exact. Because I had to do the propaganda both orally and by printed media. Écrite and et I orale. also went to the base to Je suis do this work. Uh, Among the local bases d'appui pour faire ce travail de propagande auprès des populations locales. Did you have any Question. part in uh, establishing the revolutionary magazine Red Flag? De la revue L'Étendard Révolutionnaire. Or oh, I apologize, Revolutionary Flag was the name of the ma uh, magazine. L'Étendard Révolutionnaire, puisque c'était le nom de la revue. Response. Réponse. I had no role in establishing non, the soit de revolutionary flag. It was Paul Pot who Paul was Pot in charge of that. Qui s'en occupait. Did you assist him with any of the material in your roles as uh, 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 responsible for propaganda and education. Response. Your Honor. As a person in charge of propaganda and education, I was tasked with educating the political line, the revolutionary political line, and the strategic line, and educate people with regard to the love of the nation and the people and the revolution among cadres, cadres of all levels, from the zone de tous les level zone to the sectoral level sector and commune. No, with, uh, rather, with regard to the commune level, uh, it Au is the uh, zone and the sector committee who were in charge of the des propaganda and education things. Between 1970 and 1975, did you uh, travel around speaking to the various uh, uh, organs of the Communist Party? of Kampuchea in your role as being in charge of propaganda. Response. Between 1970 and 1975, I had held these roles in the 
for example, si when rôle, dans there were times that I would be exemple, free so that I could uh, travel around speaking me to people. À des gens. Now I'm interested Question. to know where you lived and uh, what your public identity was after you returned from Thailand and joined the struggle against the colonial powers. Is it correct that when you returned from Thailand in 1951, you went to Sam Lot and joined the underground movement there? Some response, Your Honor. I stayed, I didn't stay in one place in a, for a very long time for security or for secrecy reasons. Sometimes I went to some communes, sometimes to some lot, Tassign, and sometimes uh, to the east. However, my regular residential area was in Chinet River along the Chinet uh, River. And then between 1951 Question. and 1953, en you spent some time receiving political training in Vietnam, as, uh, as you stated yesterday. Vietnam, That's correct, isn't it? Réponse. Response. From 1951 uh, to 1953, I received some training from Vietnam. Were you in Vietnam for Question. all of that period, or did you come back to Cambodia from time to time? Question. 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 Between 1951 to 1953, I had never returned to Cambodia. I had to be there doing the propaganda and education sessions. Sometimes I had to go down to the fields to help Je educating people on that site. Pour, uh, I had never returned uh, to the country during that time. When you returned to Cambodia in 1953, where did you live? Where did you live? Response. Response. Upon returning to Cambodia à mon retour in 1953, en 1953, as I indicated, I sometimes stayed at one place, sometimes at another. For example, I would stay at Bang. Levier along Chinat River, river in Samlot, Tassagne, Kranyung, 
it depends on the certain circumstances. For example, if the enemies attacked uh, at their particular exemple, locations, then I would have to relocate to others. Je quitte cet so I could say guerre. that uh, my living place were irregular during that time it was the time when there was guerrilla war and people would not uh, stay in one place longer on pas très au même and there was a period after Question. the geneva accords Après were geneva, concluded when you lived in phnom penh and you were thought, everyone thought you were a businessman. Is that correct? Et vous vous faisiez passer pour un homme d'affaires. C'est exact. Réponse. Response. After the Geneva Accord, I Après les accords de Genève. lived in Phnom Penh and my occupation changed over time uh, to suit the needs of my livelihood. Sometimes I worked as a teacher, in particular during night times. Uh, I worked as food vendor or, or just vendor selling things comme, uh, and marchand. sometimes I worked as a clerk for an import and export comme company dans une and export. The, I didn't work or held that positions or roles uh, for long Mais because I had other tasks. In 1963, Yang Sari and uh, Salot Tsar, or Pol Pot, uh, fled to the underground, but you stayed uh, in Phnom Penh. Is that correct? You you are you are still in Phnom Penh, is exact. Response. Yes, it is correct, yes, Your exact. Honor. I'm interested Question. to know how you managed to keep your uh, strong connections with the communist movement secret so that you were able to stay safely in Phnom Penh. Can you explain to me how it was that you could stay in Phnom Penh when Yang Sari and Pot had to go to the underground in 1963? Response. Response. Hiding myself in Phnom Penh and working secretly changed over time. Avec le temps, je suis resté when I needed dans le secret, to contact quand je devais Pol Pot, contact avec Pol Pot, I would have to travel to see him at the border areas. Je me rendais à la frontière pour le voir. However, living condition in Phnom Penh was not easy because I had to do some secret work. Pour moi, parce que je devais faire ce travail en secret. I could not really blend in the Chinese immigrant community because I was afraid that I'd, I would be accused of being this and being that. 
car I could not live in villages because it was difficult as well. There were a lot of spies infiltrating in those villages. And most importantly, villagers would come to borrow money from me. It was as if I had money to lend to them. But frankly, I lived near the place where Mais the Chinese fait, uh, immigrants selling je some près de local fruits. I did not really have proper place to live because I could not uh, live in the places uh, that would not uh, be uh, suitable for the living condition and carrying these uh, secret tasks at that time. Those who were tasked uh, with doing the secret works would know very well how life, how difficult life could have been. It was so difficult. At nights, we could never have enough sleep. At 3 a.m. in the morning, we had to wake up to be ready uh, to conduct our work because spies travail, would be coming to arrest uh, revolutionaries at 3 p.m. so that they could not uh, manage to escape on time. That's why, as I indicated, uh, I did not really have uh, enough sleep for that reason. Period, je pas eu de and you said that Question. during this time, Et while you remained in Phnom Penh, but Pol Pot and Yang Sari and others, were at the um, uh, base near the Vietnam Vietnamese border. If you needed to talk to Pot, you had to travel to that area. Was there any other means of communication? Could you send written messages or telegrams? Response. I may respond Réponse. as follows. When Pol Pot Yang Sari lived at the border area Yang and when I was in Phnom Penh, alors que moi, je when it comes to Pen, communication, we had to rely on the messengers. Nous des I messagers had to take a car from Phnom Penh, uh, or a truck from Phnom Penh, and I would be dropped at a place where I would be received by a messenger who took me into the jungle and all the way to the border area, for example, Office 100, where Pol Pot would uh, stay. Par exemple, au bureau où était Pol Pot. And uh, this was also a tough job as well. Because spies would be everywhere following us. So we had to disguise ourselves into different people and with all aspects. Sometimes I had to disguise myself into being officers or business people. Soit un officier ou un homme d'affaires. And it was in 1970 when the coup d'état occurred against Prince Sihanouk that you finally left Phnom Penh to join the underground. Is that correct? Response. Your Honor, Réponse. at that time, when King Sihanouk was toppled, I was uh, at the ed, uh, at the school educating people at uh, the east zone. Dans la zone est. I was not je indeed in Phnom Penh Donc, at that time. Only a few months later, I 
could manage to find people to get me back to Phnom Penh. Ce n'est que quelques mois plus tard que j'ai pu. So, are you saying that you did not join the underground uh, on the Vietnamese border immediately after the coup d'état, but you came back to Phnom Penh a few à months later? Is that what you're saying? Au du coup d'état, mais vous êtes revenu à Phnom Penh quelques mois plus tard. Est-ce là votre réponse? Response: Yes, it is. Oui, c'est exact. How long did you then remain in Phnom Penh? Pendant combien de temps êtes-vous demeuré à Phnom Penh? I cannot Réponse. remember it uh, correctly, Je ne souviens but pas très I bien. am trying to guess. Je... Je dirais... It was about four. It was for about five to six months. Que je suis resté à Phnom Penh, je pense, cinq à six Phnom Penh. Did you then join the underground at the border Question. area with um, Pol Pot, Pol Pot Yang Sari and others? Et d'autres à la frontière vietnamienne? Your Honor, I Réponse. did not take refuge in the forest with Yang Sari and Pol Pot. Once in a while, I went to meet them, probably once or once every one or two months, in order to report to them the situation in the city and also to receive instructions from Pol Pot as to how we are going to organize our party and the way forward for our party. La marche à suivre. Sometimes I went there once every month or twice, or uh, once every two months, depending mois, on the necessity of the situation of each uh, circumstance at that time. Cela dépendait des circonstances. So you continued your very dangerous work um, from Phnom Penh, uh, educating, uh, dealing with propaganda and uh, discussing the situation about once a month or once every two months with Pol Pot and the other leaders near the border in Vietnam. Response. Yes, that was correct, Your Honor. Can you tell us when the... Uh, Office 100 was moved from the border of Vietnam further into uh, Cambodian territory. Proche de la frontière vietnamienne, plus à l'intérieur des terres cambodgiennes. Of my own personal observation. Réponse. There was movement along Cambodian-Vietnamese border, but to my knowledge, mes the land that we were operating was actually the Cambodian soil, Cambodian Mais territory. It ce que je sache, nous did not belong to Vietnam, but uh, at that time, uh, Vietnam uh, was suffering from the uh, carpet bombardment of uh, the U.S. That's why uh, Vietnam had to encroach on the uh, Cambodian territory along Cambodian-Vietnam border. So as far as I know, the Vietnamese are very uh, intelligent. They contacted with the uh, commune chief along Cambodian-Vietnam border and they bought 
certain pieces of land along Cambodian uh, border so that uh, there are uh, people could uh, reside in those uh, areas. So that's what I, I knew and I learned it from uh, the Vietnamese uh, whom I uh, had contacted as well because they told me uh, that it, uh, this piece of land that they were residing uh, belonged to Cambodia but uh, they bought it from the commune chief at that time. But Office 100 did move, did it not, Question. especially as the, the Communist Party uh, uh, became more successful uh, in um, taking land uh, and moving towards Phnom Penh. It, it moved from time to time, did it not? May I ask for your clarification? Uh, what what year are you referring to, Your Honour? Well, I don't have the years in front of me, but between 1970 and 1975, Office 100 moved from its position near to the border with Vietnam to other provinces such as Kampong Tom, Kampong Cham, and Kampong Chnang. Is that correct? Yes, exact. I'm sorry, uh, once again, I would like to know uh, which year you're referring to, uh, referring to or which period. Uh, you're I said between 1970 and 1975, Office 100 moved from time to time, did it not? Response? Your Honour, to my <laughs> recollection, from 1970, from 1970, Pol Pot convened a central committee meeting. Pol Pot a organisé une réunion in du comité central. One village known as Bangluwea village connu in Santok district Kampong Tom province. Dans le district de Santok province de Kampong Tom. The convention of the central committee meeting was to designate cadres uh, to work in various sectors and zones across the country that was in 1970, in October 1970. Now, another matter that I'm interested in is the various policies that were discussed by the um, Vous posez des questions sur leaders of the um, Workers' Party or the Communist Party of uh, Kampuchea. You told the court uh, two weeks ago that in the 1950s, the party strength and organization improved greatly and that you were planning strategic and tactical policy. 
des stratégies et des tactiques. Were you closely involved in this planning of strategic and tactical policy? Response. I'm sorry once again, Your Honor, which year are you referring to? Well, in court two weeks ago, you told us that during the 1950s, so I have assumed the decade between 1950 and 1960, that a great deal of planning of strategic and tactical policy was done. My question is, were you engaged in these discussions about strategic planning and tactical policy? De planification. Response. Your Honor, it is a uh, rather long uh, story. Réponse. The period between savez, the 1950s uh, to the 1960s. Il s'agit d'une bien longue histoire. It spans over the period de 1950 of 10 years or so. Il s'agit d'une the period décennie. of a decade. I would like to inform your honors that j'aimerais vous dire the party had not established any strategic or tactical que le parti n'avait pas établi de yet. ligne stratégique ou tactique à ce moment-là. So, during the period between 1951 to 1957, donc de 1951 à 1957, Du Samut and he invited me and Salot so for a discussion. À Phnom Penh et avait invité moi-même et Salot Sar pour des discussions. He then told us that our party had not established an independent Il nous a dit alors strategic que and notre tactical line yet. de ligne stratégique ou tactique indépendante we still ne l'avait pas encore entirely fait. relying et que nous dépendions entièrement Vietnam. du Vietnam everything we every move we take we had to consult with Hanoi otherwise se faire that could not be avec Hanoi. implemented et ne pouvait être that's mis why en at that time do the mot requested us et c'est pourquoi tout samut nous a demandé to be prepared d'être prêt to devise a strategic and tactical line il nous a demandé d'être prêt à step by step in order étape to étape progressivement une ligne stratégique et tactique. get rid of the dominance and control of Vietnam. L'objectif était de se libérer du joug vietnamien. Following the instruction from Tu Samut, who is the most well respected Tu Samut, party member, était le membre du parti le plus respecté. Salot Sor and I between et Salot Sar 19 avons suivi ses instructions. 50 et donc from 1955, 56, and 57, 58, and 59, over the period of four or five years. Donc sur une période de quatre ou cinq ans, we were charged with the responsibility to devise on nous a strategic and tactical line for the party. la ligne stratégique et tactique du parti. Val Tu Samut was already 
uh, to back up and to support uh, secretly Et of this preparation. Était prêt à appuyer en secret As for cette the preparation of the uh, strategic and tactical line was divided into two parts. De the first part was responsible by Pol Pot, and Pol Pot was to uh, follow, the, the follow up the Pol situation Pol in uh, Phnom Penh. Because uh, he had been in Phnom Penh, Penh, and he had known some officers from the Pol previous administration, so he could be able to follow up the uh, development in the city very well. And for myself, uh, I was charged with a responsibility for contacting the former cadres uh, uh, following the uh, Geneva Conference in 19... following the uh, Geneva Conference in 1954. 1954. I contacted um, uh, two, uh, two components. Uh, the first one is the uh, cadre from the uh, Northwest of the country, and the second component is cadre from the uh, southwest of the country. And as for uh, Paul Pert, uh, he contacted uh, cadres Pol from the uh, eastern zone, uh, namely Sao Pem. And once we had contacted those cadres, we asked them for a report of the uh, development cadres, at the rural areas. We wanted to know the uh, development as well as progress at the rural areas because uh, Pol Pot was well aware of the situation that was developing in the capital at that time. And on our rural, examination of the situation, we noted that in the countryside, some 80% of the population in the countryside are poor peasants. How do we define poor peasants? Patients were divided into different uh, categories. Landlords are not considered peasants. They are called landlords. Landlords are those who do not use their labor. They simply hire other laborers to work for them, le for example, ils working in the field. Ils des gens pour le faire pour eux, dans les champs, par and another class of peasant is Ensuite, considered rich peasant. Donc on, il la a, des a rich riches. peasant uh, work uh, using the labor as well, but uh, not uh, uh, that much, because uh, they had the ability to hire workers or laborers to work for them as well. The third class of peasants are the upper middle peasant. They work using their labor as well, but uh, they also hire one or two uh, laborers to work for them in the field. Uh, aside from the upper middle uh, peasant, we have middle Puis, uh, middle level uh, farmers, moyen. and we also have the landless uh, farmers as well. Et so there are different layers of farmers. That's why it was quite complicated. Uh, vous savez, il y a différents strates. C'est assez compliqué. And Paul Pot uh, follow the uh, situation of the uh, different classes uh, in the capital, for example, teachers and officers in the administration. Then he could uh, follow up all of those uh, different uh, working classes uh, in the capital because he had a strong connection uh, in the city. And then uh, Paul reported uh, the situation to 
uh, to the mood uh, of the overall situation from the countryside. And he uh, mentioned that there was a lot of oppression and exploitation of farmers in the countryside. Uh, for example, if farmers had to work, for, uh, had to uh, go to do farming, they had to borrow uh, capital from others. But that capital is bound with high interest. They had to pay back excessive amount of what uh, they had earned. So the farmers had no ways in order to uh, escape uh, from poverty. That's what uh, we reported at that time to, uh, to Samut. Voilà les que nous avons fait à tout ça. And aside from the oppression and exploitation by, uh, f by the landlords, de there were officers, for example, uh, commune chief or officer in the countryside, uh, exploited uh, farmers at the grassroots level. For paysans. instance, they mobilize uh, those uh, poor peasants to work for them without getting any compensation or pay at all. So at that time, there was uh, the peasant or landless uh, peasant or poor peasant were very or extremely poor and lonely. So it seems that they were devising a, so, a, policy, a so called policy of uh, isolation of the poor peasant. As for Pol Pot, uh, he uh, tried to trace the living condition of the uh, file and rank officers in the country. Et Paul Pot, lui, euh, de un well, de at that pour time, even though Cambodia was de an independent country, but it was not fully independent based on the observation of the party. Before we devise the strategic and tactical lines, uh, what were Avant taken into consideration at that time? We had to take into serious condition of the real situation in Cambodian society. De la what de la kind of society are we in? So we were discussing and debating around this topic. And we found out that at that time, Cambodian society was the one of mid-colonialism or mid-feudalism. Uh, By feudalism, it means that it was not led by the king, but feudalism, we refer to those who have money and make loan uh, to farmers, but they impose extremely high interest for the loan, as I informed your honors earlier. So we found that, that it was the society of mid-colonialism and feudalism. There was a legacy of colonialism, and the commune chiefs were very powerful at that time, and they oppressed and exploited farmers. So based on these analysis, we also found that even in the city itself, there were also capitalists, but they were not a form of national capitalists, but it was owned mainly by foreigners, namely the Chinese uh, capitalists. Sometimes they were called Camperda uh, capitalist, representing the interest, uh, represent foreign interest.
particularly those importer and exporters notamment dans tout ce qui était import export at that time there was a assistance uh, from the united states il y avait aussi à l'époque l'aide américaine and they were in favor of comprador uh, capitalist qui était favorable au comprador capitaliste it was not like going to buy uh, commodities uh, for uh, business transaction but they mainly deposited money in a bank in Hong Kong in order to get uh, profit exemple, so by uh, taking con into consideration all of these facts Donc, if we were of the opinion uh, that our society back then was a mid feudalism and colonialism we were not totally independent It was obvious uh, that we were living in a mid, a mid um, feudalism because there were feudal. capitalists who take advantage of the poor. Il y avait des capitalistes qui exploitaient les pauvres. Once we analyzed those situation. We are certain at that time that we are in the middle of both colonialism and uh, feudalism. Then we ask ourselves, what form of revolution should we take? Should we go for socialist revolution or any other form of revolution? We discuss among ourselves for many days, back and forth, plusieurs jours then when this we decided that et nous avons en définitive conclu if the if the real situation in cambodia was in mid uh, feudalism si effectivement on était and au stade set me d'une situation mi set me colonialism or semi uh, feudalism then we had to uh, carry out the national revolution what is constituted a national revolution national revolution is the one uh, that combats again foreign interference menée contre les influences étrangères and we have to combat against the influence of those uh, capitalists who make loans with high interest rate uh, to farmers so that we can revive uh, the condition of uh, living condition of farmers so that farmers uh, can uh, be uh, relaxed in doing their farming and if they are in debt uh, they could uh, pay it Off, uh, more easily for example if they borrow 100 facilement. they have to pay uh, 50 as uh, interest th then we should bring it down to 20 for example à 50% d'intérêt il fallait ramener ce taux d'intérêt à 20 par exemple So there was a lot of discussion and Donc, explanation over how we went about doing that it was not an easy task de le faire ce n'était pas une tâche facile So the real motive behind Cambodian uh, revolution at that time, it was the uh, motive of national democratic revolution. And this movement is to uh, combat against the semi-colonialism. And by democratic, it means uh, we combat against uh, feudalism and uh, landlords. Et les propriétaires fonciers. That was the real motive voilà behind this movement. So we had to understand uh, the very motive behind Il this revolution. Les de cette, uh, revolution. That was the uh, second uh, reason. And the third one. Ça c'était pour la deuxième raison. Et la troisième raison. If the real nature of the revolution of the 
Cambodia was meant to be the revolution for the people and democracy, who could have been our enemies? Qui étaient les ennemis si on s'engageait dans la voie de la révolution populaire our enemies et démocratique? Nos ennemis étaient les étrangers. Those who were remnants of ceux the foreign in foreign owned regime for example those who still exercise the power étrangers par exemple ceux qui détenaient encore le pouvoir to be inflicted onto the people and the semi feudalism was meant to et cet état de help the farmers the peasants veut dire que les paysans free themselves from being greatly in debt being trapped in the very high interest rates sortir du piège de inflicted on them by the feudalists qui leur était imposé so par les féodaux really treated their activities as our enemies not the persons themselves et en quelque sorte, nos ennemis étaient ces activités-là et pas tellement des personnes. I would like to go to point number four. Who would si be the revolutionary forces point, les forces at that time? À l'époque, the poor peasants, the les paysans pauvres, lower middle class peasants, et les paysans those moyens who de la couche inférieure were the forces for the revolution voilà for the nation and democracy. De la Apart from that, there were other people who cela, il y avait were nationalists or who qui had national conscience des patriotes ou qui and democracy we did not really reject uh, their involvement for example the middle class peasants exemple, or the rich peasants although some of whom may have inflicted paysans, uh, exploit si or may have exploited uh, or oppressed uh, the poor peasants but if we noted pauvres, that they could be si integrated into our cause then they could be accepted as well as our forces pouvions les accepter en notre sein. Point number four. Where should we conduct such revolution? Où pouvions-nous the revolution for the nation and democracy? La révolution nationale et Everything had to start from the rural area. Il fallait commencer dans les zones rurales. Area, et les and this zones has to be reculées. expanded into the provincial Pour ensuite, or cities. We conducted the re revolution based on the notion of a drop of like gasoline, so-called drop of gasoline revolution. And how could we really struggle or conduct such resistance? Comment pouvions nous organiser we la had to go semi-legal and semi-illegal. Uh, we were both politically, public, economically, de manière politique, culturally, économique, culturelle, and we never abandoned if necessary the idea that Et nous n'avons jamais abandonné l'idée the idea of having armed struggle de la lutte armée but that's only in special circumstances Mais only dans then this brought another issue who led Ensuite such se revolution une question qui allait diriger it was only the Communist Party of Kampuchea alone under the leadership of the Communist Party of Kampuchea that could lead the revolutionary movement for na the nation and for the people, for democracy. Point number six. What could have been our slogan? Ensuite, quel serait le slogan? To achieve such a revolution. Dans le cadre de cette révolution. We had to struggle for a long period of time. We had to endure pain and suffering. Lutter pendant longtemps 
et nous devions nous être prêts self mastery or self reliance de longue souffrance donc l'autonomie la maîtrise de soi it is we who determined the fate of our own nation c'est nous qui devu, qui allions déterminer le sort de la nation if needed we had to also contact our et si friends c'est nécessaire il fallait aussi que nous contactions who were nos our friends frères. who loved peace and justice et prix de paix et de justice and our struggle was to protect notre our country our sovereignty pays, and territorial integrity integrité territoriale and it was included in our strategic Cela était policy dans notre which included uh, part of this slogan that i cited uh, une what could have been our tactics alors quelle devait être notre tactique We had strategy but failing to include the tactics in our revolution it would go nowhere tactique, la révolution ne Because nulle part. strategy is a long term vision Car la stratégie We never knew when the revolution could have been achieved quand la révolution so, parviendra à son terme the political uh, the, uh, tactical line Il fallait donc se doter d'une ligne tactique was the line to be implemented during any certain and practical situation une ligne suitable for les circonstances the current moment. situation however we never abandoned the strategic Cela étant, nous n'avons jamais Line abandonné pour policy, autant la vision stratégique car would be la stratégie the guide for tactical est policy, ce qui sert de guide à l'action tactique sans laquelle on risque de se tromper. What is the front policy or tactical policy? We Il indeed était had to gather forces Quelle of all nationalities those who loved the country the people those who had no discrimination ce... against people with regard to their political background euh, regardless of minority groups or other politiques people these people had to be integrated into a mass movement en un mouvement de masse a mass patriotic movement un mouvement patriotique de masse to conduct this uh, revolutionary uh, qui prendrait la tête de cette action révolutionnaire. This tactical line could change depending la on tactique pouvait évoluer situation. However, selon les circonstances, it never may stray too far away from the strategic Line. Elle n'a jamais dévié par Because rapport à la ligne stratégique. Motive was, of course, for the revolution, Car for the people, and for democracy. Le souci de la nation, du peuple et de la démocratie. After having the strategic line. I'm afraid I'm too exhausted Après now. Vous être doté de la ligne stratégique. After having the strategic and tactical line, de la ligne stratégique. Kampuchean revolution evolved, la progressed gradually. Cambodgienne Before that, a uh, there was a only the ambition to fight for Alors our cela, country but our course was really not well pays. guided this strategic and tactical line really et guided us very well because we learned nous from it très utile parce que nous avons pu en tirer les enseignements and the line were educated 
are implemented not only in the standing committee, c'est les stratégies et tactiques ou tactiques qui nous sont par le comité permanent. Also, mainstreamed at the branches at communal levels. Dans les cellules du parti au niveau des communes. People would be asked to attend the sessions so that they could be informed of these lines. Les gens étaient invités à être informés de ces lignes. And we listen to people from communes, from districts, from sectors, from zones, and we combined the input so that we could finally have the strategic and tactical line. And people would then be re-educated and trained. And we could see that although there was only party, the idea of the democracy seemed to be the centralized one. Et nous poursuivions selon le principe du centralisme démocratique dans le. We listened to the majority opinions. Nous avons écouté. Mainly, but we never rejected minority input because we have to reserve. At some point in the future, we may resort to the minority opinions. In 1960, there was a second party assembly or congress. So far as I recall. It was in 1960, indeed. That the Congress, the sorry, the the first Congress was held in 1960. When the strategic and tactical line was adopted and approved and implemented accordingly. In the implementation of the line, some people who had to implement it uh, didn't understand them uh, it uh, properly. For example, our idea was to do against the feudalism, but uh, people tend to attack the king. Certains ont compris que c'était le roi Because qui était visé. Parce que les gens pensaient que attaquer le feudalisme signifiait attaquer le king. So they misunderstood our notion. But actually, we were meant that to attack the feudalism it means that we had to really attack people who lend money to farmers or peasants and getting high interest. So we had to really train them time and again so that they could not be misled. Encore et encore pour qu'ils comprennent. It was time consuming indeed before the line could have been well achieved. During the implementation of the tactical and strategic line, we fought against the Lonel. Pendant cette the période, nous avons lutté contre Lonnol et les impérialistes américains, et nous avons gagné ce combat. It was in 1975, the 17th of April 1975, we won the war. The fight in Vietnam was fought all the way from 1970. 1971 through 1975. It took us five years. Vietnam once said there was never before a revolution that could really liberate a city. Jamais il n'y avait eu de révolution capable de libérer une ville. But we still faced some obstacles. This line was not discussed or approved by the Communist Party of Vietnam. Notre we ligne n'avait pas été discutée ou approuvée par le Parti communiste vietnamien. Nous l'avions conçue nous-mêmes. Nous avions décidé nous-mêmes 
by du destin de notre pays. Vietnam really opposed this line because he, uh, they said that uh, this line was not proper. Disant qu'elle n'était pas was not right. qu'elle n'était pas juste. However, Chu En Lai said that. Uh, our political Chouenai line and tactical line, which was uh, incorporated uh, based on the analysis of uh, the real situation, was a proper one. So Communist Party of China supported this line adopted by the Communist Party of Cambodia, while Vietnam remained silent. Vietnam uh, seemed to take it for granted when it comes to our political line. And uh, for that reason, Vietnam, Le Vietnam tried to notre ligne politique et c'est pourquoi derail the course of our revolution. They did not want to see la that Cambodia had a proper and precise political or strategic or tactical line because Vietnam was aiming to liberate Prénocor. Voulait d'abord libérer Prénocor. In 1976. But Cambodia liberated Phnom Penh sometime before the liberation la libération of Prénocor by est Vietnam. Quelque temps avant la libération de Prénocor par I Vietnamien. hope uh, I have uh, already responded to your honor question. Voilà, avoir ainsi à votre question. Thank you. That's um, very interesting question. and detailed. Oui, I'll <coughs> ask you one more question before uh, the break, uh, and that is, did the Communist Party of Kampuchea, during this period of discussing the strategic and tactical de lines of the party, also develop a statute which was adopted by the uh, General Congress in 1960. Response. I don't remember the details, but there was an adoption of a party statute. On Indeed, it was adopted. I just don't remember party, uh, when it was adopted. Quel the, uh, the statute uh, composed of 30 articles. The statute comprend 30 articles. I don't remember the detail of the articles uh, article because it has détail. already been long ago and the party was already uh, dissolved. Ça fait longtemps et le parti est dissous. Was this the same statute Question. that um, the Communist Party of Kampuchea used when it um, uh, took over the whole of the country in, 19, in April of 1975? Response. Response. So far as I recall, Pourtant, the souviens, statute was not immediately implemented. A few months later, tout de suite, that uh, it was then implemented. Il a fallu quelques mois pour qu'il soit appliqué. The president. the president, since it is an appropriate time for an adjournment, the chamber will take 30 minutes adjournment. We will resume at 10 to 11.
Nous le reprendrons à 11h moins 10. Security personnel are now instructed to take Nunjia back to the seat behind his council and return him to the dock when the court resumes its next session.